Most of the children that come to the Abbott House, um, I would say, have lost hope for the future. I used to feel like I was a bad kid, but it wasn't because I was bad. It was because of the, the choices the adults around me made, you know? I have autism and I'm a, a little antisocial, so I don't really interact with people all that much. So basically, I did a lot. I did drugs. I did. I didn't listen to my parents. I didn't go to school, and I. They were finally like, "Hey, um, we're gonna send her to this treatment because I think she needs help." My personal experience is that I was adopted out of an orphanage in Sioux City, Iowa. That's probably why I've always had a, uh, a spot in my heart for, for young people and for those opportunities. Me and my husband adopted a child about three years ago, and then that led us to fostering a teen who had actually at one point been at the Abbott House. And I really learned how much of an impact the Abbott House has, especially for teens who've been through just incredible trauma. Today, Abbott House serves uh, young girls through our residential treatment program, and we also have our Bridges Therapeutic Foster Care program where we have boys and girls we serve across the state. And then we have some apartments in both Mitchell and Rapid City for young people as they turn 18 and they age out of the foster care system. Abbott House began back in 1939 and as more of an orphanage for kids and uh, did that kind of work from 1939 all the way up to the early 70s uh, when the state stepped in and took over uh, adoption services, and at that time, most agencies like the Abbott House closed. Ernie Peters was hired at the Abbott House, and he started the first ever treatment center for girls here in South Dakota in 1971, and we continue to do that work today. First of all, we're helping children. That's the most important things, and we're helping the children which cannot, they cannot help themselves. Coming from a different state, it was very eye-opening to come here and realize how high the number of kids that need fostering was. There are a lot of issues in our society that is causing this, and it, it's not an issue that's going away. I think it's really important to have facilities like that because so many people need more help than what the general public think. It's because we need a, a bed available for whenever that emergency situation comes up and there is a kid who's been through something really traumatic, who needs a safe place to go that has people who know exactly how to take care of them. The Bridges program has been incredible uh, for kids because uh, prior to the program, we would have young people come to our residential program and sometimes stay up to six years. Uh, they turn 18 and they would age out of the foster care system, move out, and they're on their own. Cherokee is a foster sister of mine. A lot of this was kickstarted because of her. In her letter, she had stated that she wanted to have a home where she's loved and protected and, you know, just traditional things. Her letter was so moving that it helped kickstart the beginning and opening of the Bridges foster home and the apartments. The family that we have in our homes becomes their family and, and you hear them say, um, let me go ask mom or I'm gonna give dad a call. And one of our girls just recently had called back and is gonna have her foster dad be her, uh, the man that walks her down the aisle as she gets married. So they stay connected uh, for their entire lives. The Abbott House and the Bridges program and the people I've met have kind of like taken the role of of my parents, you know, um, of like people I can trust and get information and learn from. You get help, you learn coping skills, you learn different things, you learn what you can find about yourself. You can learn many things that you maybe can't learn out of here because you're stuck in your own habits and everything. There's no handcuffs, there's no anything like that. They come, this is our house, I mean, this is our family. And they can have jobs, they can go to extracurricular activities, they can play sports, you know, anything that a normal family does. The only difference is they have to attend therapy and that's the only other requirement to be here. Years after they leave, they're still contacting you. You're still mom and dad. And I mean, without that, I don't know where I would even be. <laughs> To expand into Sioux Falls, the Abbott House has launched the Building Bridges of Hope campaign. The plan is basically the same thing that we've done in Mitchell and then out in Rapid City. Um, we're going to purchase two homes, um, hire a couple families, and there'll be girls and boys placed in the, in the homes that we have. 
think there's really a, uh, a gap in that, uh, in that service area, and Abbott House will fill that gap here in Sioux Falls very well. Without a doubt, the need is here, and so um, we're just glad that Abbott House is willing to come and help fill that need in Sioux Falls. The state recognized that and really invited us to come to Sioux Falls so that we could provide more homes um, because there's other facilities and great programs out there that have kids that get stuck. You know, you hope that we never have the children which are abused. We, we, it's hope that the children have a good, st stable family. Like with Sioux Falls, I know they have a lot of kids that are just kind of all over the place. Um, and it kind of gives them a sense of, okay, somebody's trying to help them. Having this program here for these kids will give us a chance to have more teens, more young people choosing to stay in Sioux Falls, um, maybe going on to further their education here in Sioux Falls, joining the workforce here in Sioux Falls. You know, we have four homes in Mitchell and we have four homes in Rapid City. And uh, we know that there are 200 children in South Dakota right now that are looking for uh, foster care. Uh, Sioux Falls was just a natural uh, place to expand. The goal of the campaign is $2 million. Um, we estimate it will cost $1.6 million to buy and equip homes, and then we will put $400,000 into the Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation, so those funds will continue to support the kids in the homes as time goes by. We get to come home to a, a great environment, and knowing that it came from people that we never met is even more like amazing, because that, that just shows like that they do really care, and that their money is actually going to a good cause and that it is appreciated a lot. So if I want to put my money, because I cannot support each and every organization, I will support the organization which brings the satisfaction to me for helping the children and also is successful. So my money is not being wasted. I hope people will join us. It's a, it's a good effort. It's a, a tremendous organization that uh, provides services that are so well needed. So join us if you will. We hope that everyone will contribute to the, to the project in, in whatever way they can. Um, initially, we need to raise the funds. Um, and once that's done, then we're hoping the community will step up and provide the support for those kids that we're serving. Knowing that I can't have my own family makes this my family. And they fill every hole that I ever thought I'd never be able to. Bringing the Abbott House to Sioux Falls is going to be a tremendous impact on foster care kids in our system for years to come and for generations. I think that you can make a huge impact in our community and on the children in our community by choosing to donate to Abbott House to help make these houses a reality. Give kids a safe place to live and thrive in our community.